We have several collaboration tools within in for visual ERP, so we're just going to walk through a few of those. The first one being the workflow. So I'm going to go into the workflow designer just to show how easy it is to create standard workflows in just about every functional area within the visual system. I'm going to look at this purchase order workflow. That's usually a good example. You can see this is a purchase order authorization and release flow. What it really does is we have a starting point, the PO entry is created, and then we have two directions it could go. If the status of that purchase order is firmed, it's going to go in this direction. If it's released, it goes in this direction. And then we're telling it what happens when it reaches those steps. And behind each one of these, this here is a rule and this is a step. So if I look at what the rule is, it's really simple. You're just stating that the purchase order status is released. And same thing, so over here, it would be the same thing, except of course it would be firmed. So real easy to create those rules. You don't need to be a programmer or extremely technical to be able to do these things. I can also add authorizations. So not only is it does it need to meet the, that criteria, and it doesn't even have to have any criteria, the, the authorization could be the criteria, uh, but only these users or this group of users would be able to see that flow. And then uh, at the step, it just says what happens when we get to that step. And here you can see the message that comes up is a, this will pop up on the user screen when they save that purchase order and it'll let them know that a purchase manager authorization has to be uh, approved and the task has been sent to the purchase manager. And in this case, it's just sending a task through the visual task system. So the manager would see it on his task list or in his uh, Windows task maintenance bar also, but it could also be an email to that person or both. So you, you can copy both. You can also send documents with it. So if there's a document that needs to go with that particular workflow, you can, you can attach documents to that. It's just a matter of dragging these steps out onto the board, the different sizes and shapes that you want. You can resize them all and, and do what you want with those. And then of course, just dragging the rule line between them and defining what that rule is. So very easy. You can, you can use workflows to send messages, emails, tasks, or create stops. So you can, you can just pop up a message that stops the process of something and says something else has to happen before you can continue. Another thing that we can do here is something called notification maintenance. And for that, what I'm going to use is an example of a customer order entry where we would create a notification. You can create notifications just about anywhere also in most document type windows. So in here, if I look at my notifications, what I can do is I have email notifications that are for external folks like customers, for example, or vendors, if uh, you're, you're talking about a purchase order in, in that case. But here you say, what, what do I want to happen when uh, to send an email? So I can either send it on a new order, a changed order, or, or a shipment. It'll send out that notification to that customer. I can send internal notifications for folks on my team on the different things that happen. Or I can say notify me, which says any change to this order that happens, I would like to be notified. So all along the way, I'm tracking it and knowing when something changes or when it gets shipped or invoiced. The other thing that we have is uh, something called activities and activity maintenance. So I can just open up activity maintenance and assign it to any number of different functional areas and, and create an activity. I'll use customer order, but again, it could be any number of different forms within the system. And an activity, think of as a way to notify other people or create reminders or tasks. And by default, it's reminding myself, but I can assign this to other people. So whether I want an activity created for myself or for others, I simply decide who that is, put a due date on it and a start date, and I can have a number of activities. So if I have a number of different tasks I want, I can create several activities for the same record. As a subject line, of course, and then it's going to track activity types and categories, what the status is, whether it's in process, uh, completed, uh, it'll, it'll track that along the way and allow you to update that status if you want to. Uh, and then if you want to track estimated hours for that activity. But usually, you know, something like a follow-up would be good for this. Works real well like in the estimating window, for example. You send out an estimate and then you want to follow up on that estimate. You could create activities to, to generate those follow-up tasks. And once that's all completed in there, the user, and if I go to my menu here, can have a list of their activities that have been assigned to them. And they'll see that list of their activities and know what it is that they need to do. So it's like a to-do list. 
and I can I can sort this by statuses also so I only see my open activities but the nice thing here is that I can jump right to the record that it that activity is for and go into that and look at it it also ties into the CRM tasks and activities so if I'm working in the CRM product I would see these tasks it over there also so it's not just within the ERP side of the fence that you would create those activities for. If you are on the sales side and you work in CRM, you can, you can work in there also.